Hello, I'm Comic Drake, this is the Imaginary Axis, and today we're talking about- That's weird, there's some- Oh, there we go. Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and sorry about the interruption, it looks like YouTube somehow linked you to an alternate universe there for a few seconds. As if this website didn't have enough problems already. But hey, what was it like over there? If you're joining us for the first time, you're actually a little late to the discussion. In the last video, we talked about two different interpretations of the multiverse. One involved infinite expansion, resulting in isolated bubble universes, and the other involved at least nine different spatial dimensions, kindly represented by DC's lore. Check it out if you haven't already, otherwise things might get a little confusing. You good? Good. Because while those are two very prominent theories about how the multiverse might work, if it exists at all, there are definitely more out there. But it's a little difficult to say how many, due to the fact that even talking about most of these theories requires using terms with a lot of conflicting definitions. For example, what is a universe? And for that matter, what's a multiverse? One multiverse theory suggests that space just goes on forever. And because of its boundless existence, there logically has to be another life form exactly like you, somewhere across the cosmos on a planet exactly like Earth, in a solar system exactly like ours, in a galaxy exactly like the Milky Way. This interpretation is known as the Quilted Multiverse, but is it really a multiverse at all? Or is it just one big universe? A similar problem arises using the word dimension. You might have noticed in my last video that I kept using the words spatial dimensions. Spatial dimensions. Spatial dimensions. Spatial dimension. And that's because the word dimension by itself is actually pretty vague. We exist in at least three spatial dimensions right now. There's no denying that, but time is also a dimension. And sometimes dimension is just another word for universe, or multiverse, or realm, or pocket of segmented space-time, or whatever this is. With all these terms floating around, it really is difficult to get a full grasp on every interpretation of the multiverse and what they all mean. Unless you're Marvel. Yes, DC's prime competitor and the other half of the biggest rivalry in comic book history has a multiverse too. Go figure. But while DC excels at mapping out their cosmos, Marvel does a much better job of defining it. And even though there are some confusing bits here and there, Character exposition and guidebooks have been fairly consistent over the years and allowed us to gain an inside look at how Marvel works without the need of an orientation merit badge and basic understanding of string theory. Just seriously, Grant Morrison, why? Allow me to explain. If you recall, in the DC multiverse, variations of characters, worlds, etc. exist because there are infinite brains, and by law of probability, every variation of the universe has to play out somewhere. But in the Marvel Multiverse, different continuities don't typically take place on different brain universes. Oh no, they usually take place on different quantum universes. So, what's the difference? Well, while bubble universes are separated from each other by constantly inflating space-time, and brain universes are separated because their inhabitants are tied down to smaller dimensions, quantum universes are separated by time divergences. This is one of the more popular multiverse models out there, and you've probably heard it before. It originated as a proposed solution to several issues that plagued experiments in quantum mechanics, but you most likely recognize it as a story about a man and his cat. And a box. It's a classic thought experiment that we're going to add a new twist to for explaining the Marvel multiverse. My imaginary friends, I present to you Schrodinger's Stark. Imagine Tony Stark is flying back home after a hard day's work as Iron Man. He walks into his lab to find Pepper Potts waiting for him, and he activates the suit removal system. But what Tony doesn't know is that his last battle with Ultron left his armor seriously damaged. And there's about a 50% chance that powering down the suit right now will cause an electric discharge capable of instantaneously killing him. So for those brief seconds between the suit powering down and being removed entirely, Tony Stark stands unobserved by the outside world and must be considered, for all practical purposes, both alive and dead. But when the suit is removed, Pepper will either be greeted by a living, breathing Tony Stark, or the traumatizing image of his corpse. Not both. The problem is, physics doesn't know how this happens. How does Tony Stark's superstate collapse into one outcome? 
Why is one outcome chosen over the other? How is it decided? Well, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics suggests it isn't. But rather, every time there's a conflict like this, the timeline of history splits, creating one universe where Tony Stark is just fine, and another one where Pepper probably needs therapy. This is how most of Marvel's realities operate. Each universe in the Marvel multiverse is a little bit different because the entire multiversal system grew from divergences in the timeline. There's a universe where the Nazis won World War II. There's a universe where Captain America and Tony Stark never had their civil war. There's a universe where Wolverine killed the Hulk. And there's a universe where Spider-Man died his very first day on the job. And there isn't a map of it. It's just something that's been established in the Marvel narrative for years now. For instance, you'll notice that unlike DC, in the Marvel multiverse, it's really difficult to travel back to your own past or alter events that have already occurred. Because unless you have very precise control over the universe, time travel counts as a timeline divergence. All you can do is make another universe where things played out a little differently. But let's slow things down a bit. If the Marvel multiverse is really just one big branch of diverging timelines, then does anything anyone does matter? Most of you probably know that Earth 199,999, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, was attacked by Loki in 2012. The newly formed Avengers were able to stop his army and ruin his plans, but if quantum universes really split each time there's a conflict like this, what's it matter? There should be a universe out there where Loki won, right? Should heroes even bother trying? If our universe works like this, should we bother trying? Well, maybe not. But in Marvel, not just any universe is allowed to exist. There are beings out there that pass judgments over universes. Gods, monsters, and organizations that aren't a part of any timeline and can do whatever they want without creating new realities. You might wonder how that's possible, but it's actually pretty simple. While events that occur inside a quantum universe are subject to the basic laws of how quantum universes operate, things that occur to the universe due to outside influence are not. It really isn't that hard to avoid creating a divergence. All you have to do is meddle around in a timeline you don't belong in. For instance, if I decided to travel from my timeline to another timeline, a universe does not pop up in which I decided not to travel between timelines. Because it isn't happening in the universe. It's happening on a greater multiversal scale. Then once I get to the new timeline, I'm a free agent whose actions can only have one outcome because there isn't a timeline in which I didn't arrive to that timeline. Or as a better, less confusing example, there was one event in which the Wolverine from Earth-616 kept time traveling over and over again in an attempt to stop Ultron from rising to power. But like I mentioned earlier, it isn't easy to change the past in a quantum multiverse. Wolverine just ended up making more and more universes until he eventually created a massive tear in the space-time continuum that echoed through the entire multiverse and started displacing people across realities. The Time Variance Authority also deals with rogue universes. They're basically an enormous organization that claims authority over all timelines and dedicates themselves to fixing any big problems they come across. The Marvel Multiverse isn't void of free will just because every possibility is destined to eventually play out. Primarily because entities exist that can affect the multiverse as a whole. Heroes have a vested interest in doing their best to make sure their reality is the one they prevail in. Because if they don't, someone who isn't held down by the laws of time might show up and annihilate them. Beings like Merlin, the Captain Britain Corps, Lord Chaos, Master Order, or even Doctor Strange consider universes and the multiverse under their protection. And if all else fails, an eternal multiversal titan known as the Living Tribunal oversees all timelines with a sliver of his infinite form existing in each reality. Three heads representing equity, necessity, and just revenge, this god is as old as age itself, barely held down by any laws, and has the authority to pass judgment over any and every universe in existence simultaneously or individually as long as it considers it necessary. No universe is split from the Living Tribunal's actions unless it wants them to, and if they do, it has free reign over those universes too. But even the Living Tribunal is just the servant of an even higher power, impossible and 
even frightening to imagine. So the point stands that happy endings are still worth fighting for, even in a quantum universe like Marvel. Because if Thor's next big villain actually succeeds in taking over the universe, the very next thing that happens to that timeline might not be pretty. The superheroes who protect our here and now are, in their own way, being monitored by even bigger superheroes who protect our future. And the most interesting part about the Marvel multiverse lies with them. If you'll recall the beginning of this video, I listed Dimension as a loose term that needed better defining in a lot of multiverse discussions. But being the pros that they are, Marvel has mostly taken care of that when talking about their own multiverse. Dimensions in Marvel are almost always segmented areas of space-time with limited size that exist beyond the main universe. It's just another way to say small universe that doesn't look or maybe act like ours. As an example, this is Mephisto. He's a powerful demon who rules a dimension called Hell, it's not the real Hell, he just calls it that to scare people, and while his dimension is definitely separate from the main universe, it's not a higher spatial dimension that contains other universes like, say, the Sphere of the Gods is in DC. However, there are a few rare examples of Marvel using the word dimension to refer to a higher plane of space, specifically in the Spider-Verse series a storyline that focused on the true origins of Spider-Man's powers and a villainous family's attempt to wipe him out of the multiverse. To make a really long story short, Peter Parker didn't get bitten by a radioactive spider by accident. He was chosen to receive his spider powers by an entity called the Great Weaver, who keeps the multiverse in check by placing spider avatars throughout every reality. Yeah, crazy twist, but I know what you're really thinking. What's the purpose of the Great Weaver doing this in a quantum multiverse, which is already stable by nature and has every possibility destined to play out? Well, we get the answer in the form of the Web of Life, a construct spun by the Great Weaver and used by the spider avatars to travel between realities. This web is particularly interesting because while it does connect to every possible timeline, it's also a three-dimensional construct that exists in five-dimensional space. That's right, the same higher dimensional concept that we discussed at length in my video on the DC multiverse. So what does this mean? The Marvel multiverse not only has a quantum timeline structure, but also a multi-dimensional brain structure. And that makes perfect sense! That's why higher entities like the Living Tribunal can do whatever they want in any universe without causing a divergence, because they might be acting in one reality but they are doing so from a higher dimension. And this doesn't interfere with the concept of a quantum multiverse at all. In fact, between the last two videos, we've officially discussed four different scientifically plausible models of the multiverse, and none of them are mutually exclusive. That is to say, any of these four models of the multiverse could be accurate, or they could all be accurate. And Marvel more than supports this idea. DC has operated as a brain multiverse for a long time, but Marvel has still had the occasional crossover with them. And while there has been evidence of DC having a quantum side to its multiverse as well, we know Marvel exists on a brain separate from DC because when the Flash first encounters the Marvel multiverse, he does it in the same way he always travels to parallel universes in his own multiverse. By vibrating vibrating to the Marvel Universe's specific frequency, a frequency that only exists because the Marvel Universe is also built on string theory and vibrates just like any other brain universe would. They've also crossed over with the Star Trek universe, which also operates on a brain and quantum multiverse model. And Star Trek has crossed over with the Doctor Who universe. Heck, Spider-Man has crossed over with Batman, who crossed over with the Ninja Turtles, who crossed over with the Ghostbusters. And because of how all-encompassing the coexistence of these four multiverse models can be, every one of those realities is technically connected whether copyright will let publishers admit it or not. Think about that! Most of your favorite franchises probably have a multiverse, and very few of them never cross over with anyone. The Dragon Ball multiverse operates on a bubble and quantum model. The Pokémon multiverse operates on at least a quantum model and probably another model too. Star Wars, Spawn, Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog. Once you start seriously applying the concepts we've been discussing across the last two episodes, the possibilities are really boundless. You create an endless web of connections between fantastic and exciting worlds that makes a surprising amount of sense. And as you might have guessed, Marvel has a word for this too. 
the Omniverse. And no, they aren't the first people to use this term. There are a lot of different stories that use this word to mean a lot of different things, even in Marvel sometimes. But the official handbook of the Marvel Universe defines the Omniverse as a collection. A collection of everything. It includes everyone from Spider-Man to Superman, from Little Mac to Rocky Balboa, from Romeo and Juliet to Bill and Ted, from Saitama to Goku, from Snoopy to Garfield, from L to Mr. L, Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, Harry Potter, Sans, Spongebob, Strong Bad, Stephen Blue, Red and Blue, Me and You? Even fanfictions, cancelled works, fantasies, mere thoughts, and things that haven't been published yet. We can keep making connections all day long. And I say go for it if you're into that kind of thing. You might have a lot of fun. But with all the different realities out there, it's clear you've got options on what you spend your time exploring. So thanks for dropping by my channel and choosing me as your temporary guide through the Omniverse.